What's up, everybody? It's Jordan, and welcome to the Sports Online Show. Today is September 9th, 2021, and today is Thursday, which means the NFL season is finally back. The Dallas Cowboys take on the, the Super Bowl defending champs and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers today on Thursday Night Football. It is crazy to think that the NFL season, regular season, is already back. This is, seems like this was the fastest offseason ever. So this video, I'm going to be talking about, you know, my picks for each game and some uh, bowl predictions I have in some of these games as well. So let's go ahead and get started here like with that matchup I mentioned. The Dallas Cowboys taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on Thursday Night Football. You look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they return all their starters from last year's, you know, Super Bowl winning team, which is just absolutely remarkable. You would not think that would happen, you know, to any team ever, really. Especially with you know so many great players on a team like Brady, Tony Brown, Gorkowski, Devin White. I mean, they really do not have a weakness on their team at all. I mean, they're expected to be you know in the running to possibly win another Super Bowl this season. And then you look at the Dallas Cowboys, who really you know last year they were not really good. You know, when Prescott got injured, he was throwing he was throwing for like 400 yards a game and tons of yards because they were losing, and their defense was horrendous. You know, to start the season off there. Defense was historically bad, and it got a little bit better as the season went on. You know, obviously, Prescott's coming off a season-ending injury, and the defense really had some nice acquisitions in the offseason. You know, they got Micah Parsons, Jabril Cox, Keanu Neal, pairing him with their new defense coordinator, uh, with uh, Dan Quinn, who was the, you know, spent time with Keanu Neal in Atlanta. So this is an interesting matchup. Um, and the main issue to me is Dallas and Dak Prescott, how he's going to perform is this is his first game and getting close to be a year. You know, some people do not want him playing week one, which to me, I, I kind of understand why, because you don't want to, you know, rush anything. You don't want to take a chance of hitting any hurt again, but I, I don't think Prescott's going to play great in this game. I feel like Prescott, uh, it's going to take a couple weeks for him to kind of see his normal self again. You know, especially when you're playing a great team like the Buccaneers, you, you should not expect them to have a great game. I'm going to take the Buccaneers and this game here to start off the uh, regular season on Thursday Night Football. Next matchup here is the Eagles against the Falcons. Looking at the games here, definitely probably the, you can make a case, maybe the second or maybe even the first least exciting matchup of this week. If it's not uh, first, that would probably belong to the Jaguars against the Texans. This game's interesting because, you know, the Eagles just traded to get Gardner Minshew from the Eagles a couple weeks ago. They also have Joe Flacco, which I don't feel like that's being talked about, you know, enough for a possible, you know, replacement for, you know, Jalen Hurts if he struggles a lot. You know, uh, Atlanta, you know, obviously they lost Julio Jones, trading him to the Tennessee Titans. They do bring in an offensive line of coach and Arthur Smith, who was the offensive coordinator with the Tennessee Titans. Uh, you know, but to me, you look at the Falcons, they brought in, you know, Pitts from the draft. I think Ridley's going to be a star this year. But aside from that, I really don't have anybody. Looking at the Eagles, you know, they have a nice tight end in Ertz. But, you know, he, he needs a good quarterback to throw him the ball. I don't think Jalen Hurts is a good quarterback at all. Their defense is a is a whole mess there in Philadelphia. Their offense line was extremely bad, giving up 65 sacks last season. Uh, this would be a slugfest to me. I, I don't think this would be really a good game at all. Expect it to be, you know, a, a really low-scoring game because I don't feel like, you know, neither one of the teams is going to be play great. But I have Atlanta winning this one here uh, at home. As we continue here, Pittsburgh against Buffalo. Uh, and this is an interesting game. You look at the Steelers' defense. Obviously, you know, regardless of the Steelers are really good or really bad, they always have a fantastic uh, defense and their offense to me that's the main question mark for Pittsburgh this season because you you could really tell the second part of this year Roethlisberger was just not himself he was not playing good at all they were relying too much in a passing game and you know obviously they drafted in the first round Alabama running back uh, Najee Harris which is a it's a good pick but at the same time you don't want to take so much pressure off Roethlisberger and putting it on Najee Harris, who's a running back who's never played an NFL snap in the regular season before. This Steelers offensive line is shaky. It is horrible. And, you know, me being a Bengals fan, it's really aggravating at times when people talk about how bad the Bengals offensive line is. Because it's funny, because the Bengals don't even have the worst offensive line in their own division. The Steelers have the worst offensive line in the AFC North easily right now. Like, their offensive line is horrendous. 
pair that with you know, Roethlisberger, who's barely holding on for his life to you know play one more year. It seems like you know the whole you know overrated wide receivers with Juju Smith and Chase Claypool. They have Deontay Johnson, who cannot seem to you know be able to catch a ball consistently. Giving up a team like the the Bills, who really improved in the off season. You know their main issue was you know edge rushers, and they took edge rushers in the first two rounds, and um, Gregory Russo and Carlos Basham. And I feel like both those picks were really really good for them. Those were their main issue, and they're able to you know get two of those really good guys. Josh Allen's you know, capable of having another MVP season. I'm very surprised that you know the uh, Buffalo Bills were able to keep Brian Dayball, their offense coordinator. He's been a huge part of Allen's success over the past couple of years, and I think. The offensive mind of Brian Dayball will kind of overpower, you know, this you know, Steelers defense. I think Buffalo will ultimately end up winning this game here um, in Buffalo. But I think this will be a pretty good game uh, here at the Steelers against the Buffalo Bills. Like I mentioned, I, I'm a big Bengals fan. You know, they host the Minnesota Vikings. This is a very interesting game. Um, I know lots of Bengals fans. I would say 80% think the Bengals are going to win, at least 80% which to me is just really laughable. Uh, looking at this game, the Vikings, I have said this on numerous videos, are arguably the most underrated team heading into the season. Dalvin Cook averaged 137 total yards last season. Justin Jefferson was historically great. Adam Thielen had 14 receiving touchdowns. And Kirk Cousins was really good, had one of the best seasons of his career. You look at the Bengals' defense, it's pretty much average. It's not great. It's not horrible. But their run defense last year was not good. And like I mentioned, Dalvin Cook's a one of the better running backs in the league, averaging nearly 140 total yards. That's going to be an issue for Cincinnati. And, I mean, also something else to really keep in mind is with the Cincinnati Bengals defense, Trey Waynes will not be playing this game. And cornerback Eli Apple will have to be uh, going up against Justin Jefferson, which that is a worst-case nightmare for the Cincinnati Bengals. Um I honestly think that has a big factor on this game, who will win in the uh, overall outcome. Then you look at the Bengals, and I know lots of people talk about this offensive line. It is not nearly as bad as people think. It's it's not really great by any means. I think it's about average, which I think we sh the Bengals fans should be content with having an average offensive line and not allow a sack with their first string offensive lineman in the preseason. It looks really good so far. Really interested to see how Joe Burrow comes back. Um, you know, some people – don't want him playing in week one, which I also kind of understand, you know, talking about, you know, Prescott as well. But uh, there's two factors to me. One, I think Burrow will play good, but I think it will take a couple of weeks to him to kind of get back to his normal self. Kind of like I mentioned with that Prescott going against uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And two, uh, with the Eli Apple on Justin Jefferson. Like, that is going to be very, very bad. And part of that is why I have the Minnesota Vikings ending up beating the Bengals. I actually believe Justin Jefferson will have probably about 125 to 150 receiving yards. He's going to have at least 100. Uh, that's that's going to kill the Bengals in this game. And the Vikings got a, a nice road win here against the Cincinnati Bengals. Next up, this is one of the more lopsided games, in my opinion, looking on this week one schedule. The San Francisco 49ers taking on the Detroit Lions. Start with the Lions first because obviously they're the, the worst of the two teams. They have a nice offensive line. You can make a case they have one of the best lines in the league. You know, they bring in Jared Goff from the, you know, Matthew Stafford trade. You have They have DeAndre Swift, who I think is going to be a star running back this season. I think it's going to be really, really good. And then you look at their defense. They really don't have anybody, you know, that really stands out. They have Jeffrey Okuda, but he's not been, you know, great so far. Uh, but then you look at San Francisco. I mean, San Francisco was, you know, playoff contenders the majority of the year last year, despite most of their players being on the IR, like Garoppolo and so many other players. They have two really good uh, young receivers, and Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk. I think both of those guys are going to have great seasons. Uh, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo will be starting here week one, uh, not Trey Lance. I know some people thought Lance might play week one, considering how good he played in the preseason. Regardless if it's Trey Lance or Jimmy Garoppolo, I see the 49ers winning this one easily here uh, in Detroit against the Lions. Arizona Cardinals against the Tennessee Titans. And to me, this is one of my upset picks here. I have the Cardinals taking the win over the Tennessee Titans. 
And, you know, there's always a game or two each week. There's a, there's a big surprise upset. And I think this one is, is a possibility of happening. You look at the Titans. They brought in quite a few players. Like, uh, you know, they traded to get Julio Jones. They drafted Caleb Farley, the nice corner in the first round last uh, this past season for Virginia Tech. But they also lost to Dory Jackson in the corner uh, to the New York uh, Giants. They lost Johnny Smith to the New England Patriots. They lost Corey Davis to the New York Jets. So they did have a nice couple of nice additions, but they lost quite a few players as well. And not to mention, they lost their offense coordinator, Arthur Smith, because he's the new head coach at Atlanta Falcons. I think that's going to hurt them a lot. And I think it will take them a couple of weeks to kind of, you know, learn this offense and everything like that, kind of get it going. And then look at the Cardinals. I think the Cardinals are playoff contenders, but I don't think they're going to get in just because how tough their division is in the NFC West. You know, they they upgraded the offensive line slightly in the offseason. That was kind of a big concern for them. They brought in, you know, A.J. Green and J.J. Watt. Now, these players are not what they used to be, like, in 2015 and 16, but they're still nice players who had some nice, you know, locker room leadership. And you can maybe step up at times when you need them to. I, I just think the Arizona Cardinals here will have the upset win against the Tennessee Titans. A very impressive win by Arizona uh, getting a win here in Tennessee. The Seattle Seahawks going up against the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, Carson Wentz is expected to play in this game, and I have the Colts winning this game here. They have a great offensive line. They have the best offensive line in the NFL in Quentin Nelson. They have one of the best linebackers in the league in Darius Leonard. They have outstanding defense. Jonathan Taylor is going to be really good this year. I think Michael Pittman Jr. is one of the most underrated receivers going into this year. I think he's going to have a fantastic year, career season. Wouldn't be surprised, but at the end of the year, he's actually a Pro Bowl uh, type of receiver. And you also have Carson Wentz, who's you know coming back to a familiar system. You know, with Frank Wright as their head coach. You know, Frank Wright was the offense coordinator with the Philadelphia Eagles during the year. Carson Wentz was an MVP candidate. My main issue is just if the Colts can, you know, if can be consistent with, you know, uh, Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz, you know, he has to stay healthy. If he can stay healthy, I think he can be great. Uh, but that that's kind of the main concern this season if Wentz can stay healthy. I honestly think this Colts team is a dark horse to represent the AFC in the Super Bowl. And then going to the, you know, the Seahawks here. You know, the Seahawks, I think they're a little bit overrated. You know, they really ended the second half of the season on a bad note. Russell Wilson was playing horrible. Their defense was playing great. They got humiliated and just embarrassed uh, to the Rams in the playoffs by quarterbacks who never started the NFL game in his career. Um, it isn't really, you don't know what type of Seahawks team you're going to see in this game, but regardless, I still think the Colts will get a nice quality one here to start off the Carson Wentz era here in Indianapolis. As we continue here, the Chargers at the Washington football team. This game, the Chargers are going to win this game. I know lots of people are on the uh, Washington hype train, which is just really stupid in my opinion. It makes, look, it makes not much sense in my opinion. You look at their defense, it's phenomenal. But you also have to look at Ryan Fitzpatrick. His career win percentage is 40%. That is horrible. And you're playing a great team in the LA Chargers. I think they're one of the most underrated teams in the league. They ended the year on a four-game winning streak last season. Herbert was the best rookie quarterback we've ever seen. Their offensive line at times was worse than the Cincinnati Bengals. And that says a lot, you know, coming from a Bengals fan. You know, they bring in, you know, Rashawn Slater, who's the best offensive lineman in the draft. Corey Lindsley, who's the best center in the NFL, winning the best offensive lineman in the league last season. Um, I, I just don't see Ryan Fitzpatrick, you know, playing great for Washington. You know, he played really, really bad. Um, in the off uh, in the preseason with Washington, so uh, I think it might take a couple of weeks for Washington to kind of start playing good with Fitzpatrick. You don't know what type of um, performance you want to see from Fitz Fitzpatrick. It might be a 400 yard game with a couple of touchdowns, or a 100 yard game with four interceptions. You have no idea. I think he's one of the most inconsistent quarterbacks in NFL history. But because of that, I'm going to take Herbert and the Chargers here and a nice upset win in Washington to start off the year right for them. As we continue here, in my opinion, one of the most intriguing matchups in Week 1, the New York Jets taking on the Carolina Panthers, Sam Darnold's revenge game against the New York Jets. This is interesting because I think the Panthers are a dark horse team to rep uh, to beat in the playoffs this season. And I think the Jets, you know, them having Zach Wilson and bringing in Robert Sala as a defense coordinator was, was a great job. 
I really feel like, you know, trading Darnold to the Panthers and selecting Wilson second overall was a best uh, case scenario for both teams and both players. You know, Darnold really had no weapons and no offensive line during his time with the Jets. But, um, you know, Zach Wilson already has a better roster than Darnold's ever had with his time with the Jets as well. Uh, Darnold, you know, he has a great supporting cast in Carolina with Christian McCaffrey, the best running back in the league. Terrace Marshall Jr., a nice rookie receiver from LSU. EJ Moore, the most underrated receiver in the NFL. Robbie Anderson, who he's played with in the Jets. An offensive genius as his offense coordinator and Joe Brady. And, you know, with the, uh, you know, news a couple weeks ago of Carl Lawson, the edge for the Jets, you know, being out for the year. Uh, that's going to kill them in this game. I feel like I've lost them would have played. I think I might would have had the Jets uh, winning this game. I'm going to have the Panthers winning this one here. Darnold gets his revenge against the New York Jets, but I think this one will be a really close game, but ultimately I think Carolina will get the victory here. Jacksonville at Houston, the most, I would say, yeah, probably the most boring game of this you know week uh, in week one. If the Houston Texans have a chance of winning a game this season, it's going to be against the Jacksonville Jaguars. In my record prediction, I had the Houston Texans go 0-17. I'm going to stand by that because I really think it's a possibility. They won four games with Deshaun Watson last year, who's one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Just four games. Imagine how many they're not going to win with Tyrod Taylor, who is average at best, which is a much worse supporting cast than uh, Deshaun Watson had last season. Uh, it's really interesting, you know, if you look at the Houston Texans, they are a dumpster fire right now. And then you look at the team they're playing in, the Jacksonville Jaguars, Trevor Lawrence's first NFL game. Really interesting to see how he performs, you know, with a nice young offense and with Urban Meyer, his first game as head coach as well. Um, I, I still think Jacksonville is going to get a victory here in Houston. I just do not see the Texans winning this game here at all um, in Houston. I think this would be... Definitely one of the worst games in the week, in my opinion. And one of the best games of the week is Cleveland at the Kansas City Chiefs. This has potential to be a game of the year candidate. Uh, you know, the Chiefs really improved their offense line this past season, trading to get Orlando Brown. They drafted Creed Humphrey from Oklahoma. And they also signed, you know, uh, amazing guard from New England Patriots, Joe Tooney, as well. The Browns somehow have a better roster than last season, which is just absolutely insane. Uh, this is going to be a great game. My main issue, and that really determines the outcome for this, is Baker Mayfield. You know, looking at the Browns roster, as crazy as it sounds, their worst position group on their team is probably quarterback. And that really says something because Mayfield's not a bad quarterback. He just needs to really, you know, be better. You look at this Browns team, they have so much talent where well, Mayfield just needs to play average, and this team's really good. They need to stop giving uh, Mayfield, you know, excuses and everything like that. Mayfield needs to start elevating this team, which I think he is capable of this season. But I think it might take a couple weeks for this Browns team to kind of get going and everything. I feel like this Chiefs team is going to start off really, really good with this new improved offensive line. I had the Chiefs winning here against the Browns in the potential game of the year uh, possibility, uh, but this is going to be a very, very good game. Miami goes up against the New England Patriots here. Uh, this is an interesting one. Um, you know, some people weren't in for sure that Matt Jones is going to start week one, let alone he's pretty much the only quarterback at this point on their roster. You know, the surprise new release to Cam Newton a couple weeks ago. It's going to be Matt Jones against Tua Tagovailoa, two former teammates at Alabama University. I have the Patriots winning this one. I, I know Matt Jones is inexperienced. He's never started an NFL game before, but I do not trust Tua Tagovailoa. I probably trust uh, Matt Jones right now. Despite him never playing an NFL game, I trust Matt Jones more than I do too uh, because his supporting cast and his coaching. And that's not a knock on um, you know the you know Dolphins coaching staff. I think Ryan Flores is going to be a great coach. But you look at the you know talent that the Patriots have, I feel like Jones isn't going to have to do as much for this team to win because he has so much talent. I feel like there's going to be times where Tua might have to elevate his teammates and everything because he does not have near as much talent as Matt Jones does in New England. Uh, I think Belichick and you know, the Patriots defense will give it a hard time on Tua in this game. And I think the Patriots end up uh, winning a game here at home uh, to start off the Matt Jones era in New England. Next game here is the Green Bay Packers going up against the New Orleans Saints. And this game is actually being played in Jacksonville because of the you know big uh, storm a week or so ago in New Orleans. They're unable to play there right now. 
And uh, I actually have a major upset. I have the Saints winning this game. And I know it sounds crazy, but I just feel like the, the Packers, to me, one of the most overrated teams heading into the season. I feel like Winston has potential to thrive in this offense, you know, with Sean Payton. Uh, you know, when people talk about the, you know, 2019 Jameis Winston, I just feel like that, you know, season was actually underrated in a way. You know, he threw for 30 picks, but 13 of those picks were interceptions. Uh, I just feel like this Saints team was surprising people week one, and then they'll, you know, maybe, you know, decline a little bit because you don't know how to really, you know, look at the tape with Winston playing in the Sean Payton offense much. He's played a little bit, but not a ton. And, you know, Drew Brees obviously retiring this past, you know, season is really going to hurt New England. But in a way, you look at the, you know, deep balls. In a way, I feel like the deep balls kind of, you know, benefit more with Winston as opposed to Brees because his arm talent wasn't there anymore. Uh, with the with the Packers, you know, they lost Corey Lindsay, which I think was the worst, you know, free agency departure in the league this past season. Uh, this past offseason, you know, they signed, um, they, they, dra- they traded, to get to Randall Cobb, they they drafted Amari Rogers, the receiver. But aside from that, they do not really have any big acquisitions like you would think to try to support, you know, Aaron Rodgers and supposedly you know Last Dance, which really makes no sense because you know Last Dance is basically kind of like the Chicago Bulls, and you know they've won, you know, NBA Finals year after year with Michael Jordan. I, I don't know why the Last Dance is being called that with you know, Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams, with them never even been to a Super Bowl together. Uh, but this, to me, I feel that like the Saints are capable of a possible huge upset win here in uh, Jacksonville, which is which is just very different, you know, playing in a, you know, not uh, a non-stadium that you're not used to really playing in. Something else I feel like the Packers, you know, this, you know, Florida Heat, I think that might, you know, that's a, I think that gives them more advantage to possibly the Saints. You know, they're kind of used to playing teams like Tampa Bay, teams like Carolina, Atlanta, you know, some of these teams who are, well, uh, Carolina, Carolina in the Tampa Bay, you know, in the hot weather. This, you know, Green Bay Packers, not really used to playing, you know, in hot weather. You look at the Vikings, they play in a dome. The Lions play in a dome. Uh, Chicago plays in a cold area. So I feel like this heat might go into factor, you know, with the Packers playing, something not really used to. And I think the Saints might be able to pull off an, a major upset here in week one. Denver against the New York Giants. This is really, really interesting. Teddy Bridgewater was named the week one starter in my and in my opinion, I just do not think this was the right idea. Uh, until the Denver Broncos can figure out their quarterback situation, they're going to be average. Once they figure out the quarterback situation and then get consistent quarterback play, I feel like they're 100% a playoff uh, team. They have so many young players who are going to be really, really good, like Javante Williams, Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, KJ Hamler, Noah Fance. They have a nice defense as well with Von Miller, Bradley Chubb, and Justin Simmons. But with Teddy Bridgewater and Drew Locke, you just cannot – uh, you cannot, you know, take your chances with one of these quarterbacks to win you a big game or against a really good team because they are very, very inconsistent. Last season, Teddy Bridgewater was 0-8 in potential game-tying or game-winning drives in Carolina. Drew Locke, you know, has showed some promise, but he's just so inconsistent. And then you've got the uh, New York Giants, you know, with inconsistent quarterbacks. I mean, Daniel Jones, his name is obviously in that conversation. He's a turnover machine. And you look at it, it seems like he has a turnover at least once a game anymore, it seems like. You know, they get Saquon Barkley back coming off from an injury. They signed Kenny Galladay in the offseason, which was a major acquisition for them. Uh, they got Aziz Arjulari, a fantastic edge rusher from Georgia in the second round, one of my favorite draft picks in the entire draft. Uh, this is going to be a good game, but I have the Giants one here because, as crazy as it sounds, I trust Daniel Jones more than I do Teddy Bridgewater, which that's pretty much going to be the only time you – uh, hear me say that I trust Daniel Jones more than other starting quarterback. But the Giants get, start off the uh, season nice here with a victory against the Denver Broncos. Sunday Night Football, the Chicago Bears against the LA Rams. This game is going to be embarrassing for the Chicago Bears. I know lots of people want Justin Fields playing in this game. I don't think people realize how stupid that would be. Because once you put Fields in, you're not going to you know really eventually take him out because then you have a quarterback controversy. I feel like you have to have Andy Dalton first uh, start this first couple of weeks uh, for Chicago to get, kind of get the uh, hard part of the schedule out of the way, and then you can maybe start Justin Fields. You look at the Chicago team; they have Allen Robinson, who's a really nice receiver. They have Devin Montgomery, who's a nice running back. They have like a ton, a ton of tight ends, but aside from that, they really don't have anybody on offense. They have a nice uh, defense. 
And it's crazy to think that this Chicago team was actually in the playoffs this year, uh, this past season. It's really, really crazy. And then you look at the Rams. You know, the, the Rams are familiar uh, in playing, you know, with the Rams' new quarter. Excuse me, the Bears are familiar with playing the new Rams head coach, at starting quarterback, and Matthew Stafford. You know, uh, Stafford played with the Lions and was playing against the Bears twice a season. And I feel like this Stafford and Sean, Sean McVay connection is going to be amazing. The NFL, it's going to be very hard to any team to stop this, you know, Rams offense. I think Stafford's due for a historic season. They have one of the most underrated wide receiver duos in Cooper Cup and Robert Woods in the NFL. They have a great, you know, player and Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey, two of those guys. I mean, both of those guys are top 15 defensive players in the league. Aaron Donald, you can make a case, is the best player, not just on defense, but in the whole league in general. Uh, this is going to be a long day for the Chicago Bears. They're going to give Andy Dalton uh, some struggles. They're going to pressure him. You know, being a Bengals fan, when you see Andy Dalton with pressure in his face, you know, it's going to, not going to end well. He's horrible when he's blitzed and pressured. Long day for the Chicago Bears. I expect the Rams here to win by 20-plus uh, in this one. And finally, the last game of the this week one NFL season is the Baltimore Ravens at the Las Vegas uh, Raiders. This is interesting because, you know, with the you know recent, you know, injuries of the Baltimore Ravens with Justice Hill out for the season and J.K. Dobbins out for the season, the Ravens might not run as much as they're used to, which is just very, very interesting. They did sign Le'Veon Bell a couple of days ago, and John Harbaugh said that there is a chance that Bell might suit up and play in the game. Uh, in the offseason, you know, the Ravens traded Orlando Brown to the you know, Kansas City Chiefs. They, tr they drafted to get Minnesota wide receiver Rashad Bateman. So offensive line, you know, that kind of took a slight hit. It did sign Kevin Zeitler to a couple uh, three-year contract, I believe, a nice guard. Uh, so they, you know, their offensive line maybe took a slight hit. Their wide receivers are improved now. They also signed uh, Sammy Watkins. And, but it's interesting because you don't know how much this team is going to be running now with those two injuries. And then you look at this team and the Las Vegas Raiders. The Raiders are the definition of average and inconsistent. The Raiders are one of those teams who are capable of beating the Chiefs one week and then losing to the Eagles the next week, which, I mean, really is true because you look at the Raiders last season. I mean, they beat the Chiefs once last year and then nearly beat them again and almost actually swept the Chiefs. Derek Carr, to me, as, as really interesting in this game. He's one of those guys where he has to have a great year this year because after this year, there's a chance maybe, you know, Vegas maybe ends up trading him or something like that. Uh, you know, he needs to step up. Uh, really interesting because, you know, he sometimes struggles against, you know, top defenses. I want to see how he performs against this Baltimore defense who, despite losing Matthew Judon is to the New England Patriots, it is still expected to be a top 10 quality defense in the league. Uh, I have the Ravens winning this one, but I wouldn't be surprised if this, you know, Raiders team is maybe may, maybe uh, upsets Baltimore here uh, in Week One. So that really kind of does it for this uh, video, talking about my Week One uh, picks and a couple of bowl predictions as well. Uh, to recap, coming kind of these picks here: Tampa Bay over Dallas, Atlanta over Philadelphia, Buffalo over Pittsburgh, Minnesota over Cincinnati, San Francisco over Detroit Lions. Upset with Arizona beating the Tennessee Titans, the Colts defeating the Seahawks, the Chargers defeating the Washington football team, Carolina defeats the Jets, Sam Darnold gets his revenge against New York, the Jacksonville Jaguars over the Houston Texans, the, Cle uh, the Kansas City Chiefs over the Cleveland Browns, Patriots over the Miami Dolphins, major upset in the Saints defeating the Packers, the Giants over the Denver Broncos, Rams humiliating the Chicago Bears on Saturday Night Football, and the Baltimore Ravens defeating the Las Vegas Raiders on Monday Night Football. I thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video and subscribe to the channel, I would greatly appreciate it, and I will see you all next time on the Sports 2 Hunt Show.